after reading both Everyday Sexism and looking into Andrew Tate this week, I decided to look into the UK statistics for domestic violence. Everybody talks about how bad things are, but how bad are things? So here's the first slide. As you can see, this charts domestic abuse, partner abuse, family abuse, sexual assault, and stalking. And from 2005 to 2016, things have steadily gone down from the high point of 2005 to the low point of 2016. And this tells me society is continuously going in the right direction. We're not perfect and we're never going to be perfect because we're humans. We're, we're not created perfect. This, this was taken from the government website. Now this spreadsheet tracks domestic and other homicides of, of ages 16 and over by sex, age and victim. So victim of domestic homicides from March 2018 to March 2020. And as you can see, domestic victims of domestic homicide shows that women are by far more at risk than men. And, and it is very sad that domestically women are still getting abused and attacked and killed in this day and age. But just to highlight how dangerous the world actually is, the next one is victims of non-domestic homicides. And non-domestic homicides, it was 966 murders. Of those 966 murders, 131 were female and 834 were men. And this shows you that society is not the issue. This is an ingrained animalistic behavior thing. Humans fight. We have fought from the dawn of time. And unfortunately, men are very much the issue here. And men have life way more dangerous than women. Outside of the domestic house, men are more at risk than, out, than inside the domestic house. That's absolutely true. We spend more time outside the domestic house than inside. Men are the protectors. Men should never ever call harm to their woman or their family. But men are the protectors in outside world as well. And the outside world is a very much more dangerous place than in the home. The statistics show us this. So we have to be very careful in trying to fix a, a systemic problem that is a systemic problem, not just domestic. This is a, a societal issue. So, at the, so this next slide is ending year 2021 and it's the total number of rapes and sexual assaults recorded for the year for March 2021. So we've got rape of a female age 16 and over we had 18,848 cases of non-domestic abuse related rape. 18,246 cases were domestic abuse. That is a scary statistic and I was very uncomfortable when I when I found this. Then I saw the sexual assaults on females aged 13 and over and I saw the amount and I actually felt sick in my stomach a little bit. There are 26,348 cases of sexual assaults if you increase the rate. So between the ages of 13 and 16 that added almost another another eight well, they added another 8,000 cases of rape. However, in the younger ages, more of them happened outside of the home, but they still happen inside the home. This is a serious problem, it's seriously troubling. And this is the kind of information that I start thinking about when I read these books of sexism and I get my male defensiveness going. And then I see these statistics and I start thinking to myself, if a man, a protector of a family, does something to the people under his care, he is not a man and he is not worthy of that title. Men are protectors. And this slide is extremely troubling to me. And I was extremely defensive when I first read this book and I did not really like a lot of the stuff that was being said. And some of the statistics have kind of made me go, yeah, I am right. But this statistic was the most uncomfortable one I uncovered because men in their homes are creating terrible, terrible crimes. And these are weak men. These are the men that didn't become capable. They didn't become competent and dangerous and learn to control it. These are the weak men that I'm talking about. They turn their endeavors and turn their actions on people who cannot defend themselves. The weak and society needs to root out these men. However, this is the most troubling slide I've found on the government website. This is the prevalence of domestic abuse among young adults 16 and over by type of abuse and sex. So physical abuse, threats, force, sexual assault, stalking. These are all percentages. So no matter which one you read, physical abuse, threats, forces, sexual assaulting, women are higher. Any partner abuse, women are higher. However, there is a small men male side so not all women are perfect you know there's a one if you put that into a ratio of 10 you know one third of women are just as bad as the weak men so let's realize that and take note of that society that woman one third of women are just as at fault are just as wrong as half of the men that perpetrate these crimes and again these are troubling statistics that you don't realize
realize when you're a, a good father and a good husband and you're not causing you know any hurt in the world and you don't deal with these things day in and day out and you're not a member of the police or you're not a member of you know the legal society or you're not in politics you don't read any of the stuff you think everything is just okay because once you close your door in your house everything's safe your family's safe and everything's safe but there's people that are actually suffering out there men and women and people should speak up for themselves and defend themselves and stand up for what they believe in government should be looking at ways of making things better you know we need to figure out why these things are happening you know i wish i could find the data of all the interviews of all these people to find out what actually happened at the time that led to it what are those men going through what are those women going through what's the root cause analysis why is this happening were they abused as children have they had a really hard life and failed a lot and taking it out on the weakest person around them why is this happening why are people doing this especially when you caught when you when you're a person that could never physically do any of this stuff why is it happening what causes a person to get to that point we need to figure out these solutions in order to solve this problem but we can't just say men are you know toxic masculinity is the buzzword that everybody throws around to solve this problem but what is toxic masculinity because the very masculine men the real hard men are not doing this stuff real hard men are not interested in abusing the weak real hard men are only interested in fighting people that are their level and above to climb their social status to climb the ladders or climb the industry climb their, their division of social life the division of their social life the strong men are not doing this so it's the weak men why are we focusing on the strong men and making them out to be the problem when we're not focusing on the weak men hiding behind closed doors and and again this slide is just another one that just paints it out perfectly so so in the first circle you've got female victims and male victims so obviously male victims are smaller female are bigger but then you go woman killed by men by a male current form or former partner and men killed by a female current or former partner massively massively different men are really small women are really big but then you go into the outside world men killed by men or women killed by a woman killed by women men are causing these issues but again these are not the masculine strong men of the world these are the weak cowards of the world that attack only the weak it is dangerous to be a man in the world it has always been dangerous to be a man in the world you get sent to the front lines if you're not high enough nobility you get sent to all the bad places that is how it's been since the beginning of time only now in recent decades has will has the world been safe and we all forget that world war ii ended in 1945 and since then we've had an unprecedented amount of safety if anything we can see around us today the world is changing and that is because perhaps we've all gotten very very soft and we're not prepared to make those difficult decisions and we've gotten weak then there was COVID, and COVID shot up the, the, the numbers of domestic related offenses in england and wales and i'm sure other parts of the world this isolation and this entrapment you know caused massive amount of social problems problems that we had never factored in and they're still continuing to this day and we have to understand why these are happening and we have to find solutions for them but we can't blame the sexes these are systemic issues that need to be focused on you know and at the end of the day this is true one in three victims of domestic violence is male but that doesn't discount that two in three are female domestic violence regardless of whether the victim is male or female is wrong and should stop and we need to do what we can as a society to figure out a way to make it better help these people help themselves change their ways and that brings this week's podcast to an end and it's been a it's been a challenging one because we all have our own views on how society should work we have our, all have our own views on what a man is and what a female is what's important to us because we're either male or we're female and we decide what's important to us you know i have my ways and i have my beliefs and i have my core principles that i stand by i generally look to never put anybody down or say anybody's wrong for pursuing their life or pursuing their course in life as long as their course doesn't affect me i have no problem with anybody doing their own thing the only time i have a problem is when the world starts persecuting me for a stereotype that has and we have to remember that those stereotypes have been around since the beginning men are not as important as women when there's a war men get sent to the front lines women do not because you do not need as many men to repopulate the world as you need women if you watch my videos on demographics and you you see how the uk birth rate has dropped down to 1.8 you soon see how important it is these gender stereotypes are to our society to our economy and it's not something we should be looking to change men and women have always worked together to raise a family that is our primary goal we meet a woman we fall in love we raise a family we work hard we build a house we build a home we keep that family safe and those are our roles regardless of what job we do or regardless of how much you want to be a woman or how much you want to be a man those are what we here on this planet to do career is not the most important thing and i would gladly give up my career to raise my children if i had to luckily my wife and i we have a relationship where we are both pretty much equal in what we bring in financially 
and we're very much equal in what we put in the house physically. There's some areas where my brain works better than hers and there's some areas where hers works better than mine and we work together to solve problems. It's the perfect partnership. We take things from both perspectives. I am not the leader of my, my house. I am the protector. I am the man. I do the man job. But we're a modern day household and we believe in modern day values. We raise our boys to be diligent, hardworking, loving, caring people. My wife teaches them how to treat treat ladies with respect and I teach them how to treat ladies with respect every day they watch me with their mother. But I teach my boys how to be hard and how to defend themselves and how to look after themselves in a very dangerous and difficult world. You know, a lot of us that grew up, a lot of us, I mean, I never grew up in the West, I grew up in Africa, but my children, you know, they've grown up in the UK. They're never going to know the dangers and the hardships that some people experience in the world. Naturally, they're going to grow softer because they've never experienced those hardships, but they need to know about them. You need to teach your children everything you can to be as good and caring and as capable and as dangerous as possible so that they can learn to control themselves and become valuable members of society. And that is the problem. Parents, we are responsible for our children. We are the ones that teach them right from wrong. And if you're a father and you're abusing your wife and your child is seeing that, he's going to grow up to do the same thing. If you're a father and you work hard and you make time for your family and you're compassionate and you're caring and you listen, you're going to raise a family that's going to be the next generation and possibly make the world a better place. The decision starts with you. I am, one, I am for one, 100% against domestic violence. And anybody who abuses anybody is less of a person. But I'm also a firm believer in men should be left to be men and women should left to be women. And if a woman wants to enter herself into a manly, a male dominated realm, then she has to rise up to that occasion and be accepted in that male dominated realm. They don't need to, they shouldn't have to change to accept the woman. And the same for man. If a man wanted to become for argument's sake, for the lack of a better idea, a nurse, let's say. Traditionally, that's a female dominated role and a man goes in to become a nurse. Nobody thinks anything worse of the male nurse. I personally don't. I don't care as long as they're doing their good job. However, they can't go in there and be a hard man and not care about people if you're going to be a nurse. You have to have those feelings. If you're a male and you have that compassion, then you'd be a great nurse. And if you're a woman and you're a roughy tufty or like a tomboy and you can cope with a male working with men in the, the hard, you know, the hard environments that men work, then you're fully entitled to be there. But you have to keep up with the men. You have to keep up and you have to contribute the same. You don't have to contribute more. You don't have to be better than them. You just have to keep up and then you should earn the same. If you're earning less, then that's ac not acceptable. If you're doing less work and you're earning less, you need to accept that you're doing less work. The same as a man. You know, if we're in an environment in a workplace and one man does less than another man, we'll be telling them, listen, we're carrying you here at the moment. You need to pick it up or you need to go. And we'll start giving them a hard time internally before it even gets to management level. That guy would usually leave because he knows he's been found out and he can't keep up and everybody else is carrying him and that makes his working life difficult. That's the way the, our workplaces were designed to work. It's not bullying. It's just how it is. And if anybody's watched all my previous stuff, you know I'm a true believer in equality. I want the world to be equitable. I have a disabled son. I'm fully inclusive. I'm fully buy into the inclusivity of the world. But I would never push my son forward to say he should have the same job as anybody else. You know, he has a very specific need and a very specific ability. He's not equal to everybody else. He's his own unique individual. And that's the most important thing. We need to accept who we are, who we want to be, and who we can be. And we need to be generous. And we need to be caring. And we need to be the best versions of ourselves. So until next time, take care.